Uh, my name is Tanya Bumstead, and I am uh, one of the lucky teachers who get to teach at Vista Hills Public Schools. So we've just opened up this year in the fall. And uh, these are my wonderful students who have come with me to uh, present today. Um, I'm all about students presenting because I think they're the ones doing the work. I'm just there observing and watching the wonderful things happening. So I like to have them here with me. We're going to talk to you about an experience that I kind of started last year um, with my PLN on Twitter. So I just want to talk about what that is, what we've done, and maybe you guys can switch those slides for me because our clicker wasn't working in this room. So I value my professional learning network quite a bit. So I have two Twitter feeds. I have one for our classroom that we're always sharing what we're doing, uh, what we're learning about for the students, for the parents, and for anybody who wants to have a little scope in on what's happening in room 35 at Vista Hills. I also have a Twitter feed for my own professional learning. And that is the most valuable tool in all the years of teaching that I've ever had. So last summer I had um, noticed a tweet that kind of came out and the tweet came out about a teacher who was looking to start a learning hub. And if anybody, well if you've ever met me, I'm the type of person who steps in with two feet and goes, I'll do it! And I stepped right in and said, sure, I'll do it. And I, I did it. Um, it was an experience that was quite unique. So what happened was we connected with a bunch of teachers from around the world. So we had teachers from Hawaii, teachers from Nashville, teachers from Texas, and teachers from Barrie, Ontario. And what we did is we met online and we talked through Voxer, we talked through Google Docs, and we created this online learning hub for our students just by connecting on our PLN. So this year I decided, eh, the learning hub worked okay last year, but what didn't work was I was connected with a bunch of teachers who were language teachers. And I teach, at the time I was teaching science only. And so we were creating challenges for our students uh, based on language criteria. So they were creating poetry, which sometimes doesn't necessarily work with what we're doing in science, right? So it didn't really quite work. So this year I thought, well, I'm going to use my PLN and I'm going to put myself out there and I'm going to see who I can get to kind of join my little bandwagon. So I tweeted out, I don't know, multiple times throughout the summer. And that's the tricky thing is that sometimes it depends when you tweet it out, depends on the time of day, depends on who's following you. And I really did a push that summer to say, I'm going to follow every teacher out there that's involved in this STEM idea. So I look for math teachers around the world, I look for science teachers around the world, and anybody involved in technology that was interested. Started following them. And then I put out my tweet. I would like to create a STEM learning hub. If you're interested, let me know. And that's how it started. So the way it worked is we actually got a few schools to step on board. So if you want to just click that for me there. Thank you. So here at Vista Hills, we started it. And then I had a teacher from New York who actually is a STEM coordinator in New York. And he said to me, Tanya, I'm on board. I have three schools involved. We're going to get involved with it. Let's do it. So that summer, we opened up this doc and we started putting ideas. What would our STEM learning hub look like? So we were putting ideas of how would we organize the classes, how would we organize the groups, what are the groups going to do when they get together, and what's that going to look like? We also had Lincoln Heights jump in, so <laughs> not too far away, but John Fry over at Lincoln Heights said, yep, this sounds fabulous, I'm in. So we signed her up and it all started coming together. So the first thing that I try to really, it's really hard when you're making connections with people outside of the Waterloo region because we have goals that are set in things, criteria that's kind of set for us for BIPSA that we are trying to establish. So the plan, act, and assess. But it was interesting as I was talking to people from around, from New York, um, their goals kind of fall in place. Maybe not the exact same words or lingo, but it works the same way. So one of the things we looked at is Planning. So how do we plan this learning hub? What does that involve for the students? How do we act? How do we build on this? How do we create our hubs within the school? And then how are we going to assess this? So let me tell you a little bit how this is going to work. So the students are all put into groups. In these groups, they have nobody in their classroom who's in their group. Okay. So they're going to tell you a little bit about how that works, but this is what the STEM Learning Hub is. So imagine working in a group with nobody that's actually physically in this room. And you now have to communicate with them to solve a problem in some way. And all of our problems are STEM related. So science, technology, engineering, or math are involved, and they're trying to solve a problem 
without the people in the room knowing. So every cer certain per every person in the classroom all has a different challenge that they're working on. Okay. Go ahead, Sam. So my role looks like this. My role was first of all to do the light work to kind of connect with my feeling and get it started. The next work was to establish what the learning hubs were. So I created 20 groups. I put a student from each of my groups, or a student in each one of those groups, so we're dividing it up. And I teach three classes. So each of these students are in a different learning hub, and they have somebody in those other three classes that are there. So if they needed to, they could reach out to somebody in the hallway and say, hey, you're learning hub number one. How are you doing this challenge? Okay. Um, I help the students create blogs. So majority of our communication is through Blogger. So that's just in our GAF um, platform. So the students all create there. It keeps everything nice and tight because we're doing also Google Classroom. A lot of our communication is happening online. And then we also then put in put them in this mixed group. And then we my job is to supervise those blogs. So I'll show you at the end uh, what it looks like. All the students give me their blogs, and I just simply go in every couple of days and click a different learning hub and look at their blogs and see what they're doing. Okay, so they're communicating, commenting on these blogs about what they're doing and what's happening. Okay? And the basic thing, basic thing that I get to do is just sit back and watch them now because it's, it's interesting watching them interact with people that are in the room. It's interesting watching them try to brainstorm and as students are going to tell you, there's a lot of pressure because now you're not performing for a teacher, you're not performing for the people in your room, but you're performing for your peers out there in the world, around the world, right? So it's kind of a, an interesting concept. Go ahead, Stephanie. So you're going to pass it over to students. They're going to tell you a little bit about how this works and what it means for them and how it changes their learning. Hi, my name is Alexandria. So we've been communicating on Google Hangout, which is kind of like FaceTime, Skype, or just video chatting. And in about two weeks ago, maybe more, we were communicating with the two other classes, one in New York and another in Waterloo. And we were just technically asking questions back and forth to get to know one another. And when we communicate, which, is, which will be once a month, we will be drawing out of challenges for our work. Hi, uh, my name is Stefan, and we created blogs to introduce ourselves to people in our learning hub, and we use these blogs to show results of our STEM challenges, which Alex is going to talk more about. So the pros of doing the blogs is that we can create more Google connections, and the cons is if you have a question, we can't look behind us and ask the person behind us, hey, we have to ask a question, we have to, we have to like, take it up on the blog and ask the person the blog, it takes longer than the first blog. Hi, my name's Allie, and in our learning hub, we're doing a STEM challenge draw where we pick out of a hat a piece of paper, and it is a challenge that our learning hub is required to investigate. And by the end of the month, we have to try to come up, come up with a solution to that challenge and present it to our hub. So some of the challenges that the learning hub might pick out are if you could create a mobile app or computer program that would help improve an aspect of human life for the planet, what would it be? So a learning hub could get that challenge, and they would have to figure it out and present it to their hub. And even tomorrow, which is Friday, we're going to be picking out our challenges, and we're going to know what our challenges are. Um, how does this change learning? So it's not just paper and pencil like most schools may use. It's also we're like helping the environment by not wasting as much paper. We're using Google Hangout and Blog to connect with our learning hubs, and it also prepares us for STEM-related careers because. In the future, technology is going to keep growing, and most of our jobs are going to involve technology, so if we start using it now, it'll help us later. So this changes learning because we're not just communicating with our class, we're communicating with others around the world, and we'll also get to see what other students' learning environment is like. And also, um, the students will need to be accountable to be able to complete the challenge for their help, so it's a responsibility that the student will need. This also evaluate our work with our peers at the learning hub. This also helps us develop our problem-solving skills so that further in life we can solve bigger and harder problems. Good. And I'm going to escape out of here just for a moment, and I'm going to show you what it looks like a little bit. So this is an example. This is what our learning hub looks like. The students um, actually have access to this. So I have a blog of my own, so I'm just going to type that in there.
So this is my blog, and the students have access to this, that they're here all the time. So they click on the STEM Learning Hub, and then it tells you a little bit about our Learning Hub and what we're doing and who we're connecting with. And then they have access to their hubs here by clicking on the same link there. So when they go in, these are, what Learning Hub are you guys, do you know what number you are? Five. So here's Alexandria. Let's go down to Alexandria. So Alexandria is here. We're going to click on her blog. This is, did you know we we're going to do this? There we go, Alexandria. <laughs> this is Alexandria's <laughs> blog. And she's going on, and she's just basically going right now and just doing an introduction about who she is, what we're doing at Vista Hills, what we're doing in class, and different things going on there. Um, to get started, they've been told that they have to go into the Learning Hub and now communicate with everybody in their blog and welcome them here to the Learning Hub. So welcome to Learning Hub number five, and they're just talking about general ideas. So we haven't posted our um, challenges yet, so they don't even know what the challenges are, and we're gonna draw for them tomorrow. So this is exactly what our communication looked like a little bit when we started in the summer. So I created this doc. We kind of wrote in different colors and got things going. We actually had a lady in Nashville who was jumping on board with us, which was fantastic. And she was a brand new teacher to her school and didn't know if she could take, take it all on this year. So I'm definitely going to look at her next year and see if maybe we can get her involved. So we just kind of, I posted the framework in the black to get discussion going. And then we just added ideas. And it just kind of fell in place is what it really happened. So then at the end here, this is our draw tickets of ideas of what the students will be um, pulling on tomorrow. So tomorrow's kind of an exciting day at Vista. They're excited because they know that their challenge for the month of November is going to be drawn. And so they're going to be able to work on this challenge, um, communicate on their blogs with their hub and say, hey, how, how are you going to solve this problem? I need help with this. What kind of parameters do we need to set for this challenge? And they're, so basically my part's done. They're going to be doing all the work now and making that life work happen and coming up with those ideas of how to solve this problem. Just a question. Um, are they ideas related to curriculum or are they just ideas? Like, yeah, so the, the tricky part is when you start inviting people outside of WRDSB, the curriculum is not necessarily the same. So I teach science and math. So when I look at these ideas, and the way I teach my class is not necessarily strand specific. I've really tried to move away from that and made it whole focus. So I look at these ideas and go, yeah, I'm going to be able to evaluate and assess these and make it work for whatever one we're looking at. So it's not, I think if you were to go through this and look at the grade seven curriculum, most of these are probably going to work, most are going to work in here. Um, but did you have that sort of in your mind as you were creating them or no? I did only because, so I've been teaching grade 7 science for about 12 years now. So for me, typing up these, these challenges were like, oh yeah, we could do this, we could do that. Um, and then they, so Dawn Fry, her, her group over at Lincoln Heights are actually all grade 8s. So she typed in some challenges that were more related to grade 8 science, which my kids will be working on as well. Um, but we'll make it work for whatever we're doing. Yeah. yeah. So is one school the school that does the drawing, or do you, will you take turns? On we'll take turns. Okay. Yeah. So as the initial draw, we're just start starting our first draw tomorrow. Um, Vista Hills is going to do it. Then Lincoln Heights is going to do the next one in December. And, um, and so then we'll those students turns. will post it, what it is? Yeah. So what will happen is they're going to post on their blog, and then also this is all kids will have access to this, so their, their idea is they would type their question up here about what they're going to, what their challenge is, just up top for their whole hub to see. Yeah. Now I think when I talk about this to other teachers, the first thing they do is they get those bug eyes and they're looking at me like, so Tanya, I can't, can't do that, I can't do it. But I think if I could give you any advice, <laughs> um, start small. Right? And if it's just somebody that you make a connection with, with the school down the street, right? and making that online connection with them. Or making it with a bunch of teachers that teach the same subject as you, that you've met in a few workshops, that's a good start. right? Um, I'm very aware that not everybody's like me and jumping up two feet because you're afraid of, that, of what might happen. I get that. And I think last year was a perfect example. It didn't work well for me. It was, it was a struggle to make it happen. It was really neat getting cranes from the 
kids in Hawaii who were learning to speak Japanese and communicating through that uh, with them online and you know having that time change was a difference trying to make that connection with them because we had some time uh, problems between Eastern Standard Time and Pacific Time and everything else it was, it was difficult um, that was a tough part and I think making a connection with somebody who teaches similar grade levels and especially uh, subject I think is important because language is, was I know language is something that we all teach but it didn't really fit into what we were doing. Writing a poem about structures is not exactly a fun thing to write. But my students were doing it and they made it happen, right? So it's just one of those things that we, we made it work. We made it work. Yeah. yeah. I had a few questions, but um, I'm trying to get my head around uh, a few things. But one is, I see that each one of them, like Alexander, has got her own blog. Mm -hmm. What is the central communication <coughs> hub for them? Is it this doc? Like, I, it, or is this your, you said it's open to all students here. It is, so. But that, that's her blog. Is there a uh, group five hub? So that, because you were saying they sit down and they, they're reading, but they, are you individually going to each member's blog and reading everybody's contribution? Is there a central uh, place where it all goes into? Yeah, good question. So Alexandra, because her school drew the first card, she'll be the hub leader. And so they'll come to her blog as the main communication. Okay. And then when they complete the challenges, everybody in that hub is required to put their challenge on their own blog. So then Alexander can go and look at each of their blogs and then comment. So she'll wait for the next month to go to somebody else's right. blog. Right, right. Except for the initial part, which is learning about each other. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so the initial part, what's happening right now is my students are simply going to that list and they're going down and just kind of welcoming people to, so if they go, this is, this is what we're in the middle of doing right now, right, guys? Um, so if I'm in, let's say, Jamil's group right here, number three, I'd have him go to each person in their blog. So this is, um, Jada, oh, Jada doesn't have posts yet. So this is what we're dealing with a little bit, is that, um, I don't even know this person. There we go. So he then is responsible to go to each member, just kind of welcome them. And so, I don't know, we'll look and see what Jamil's done here. So Jamil's now wrote a welcome. Yeah. Welcome, Samantha, to Learning Hub number three. My name is Jamil, and I really like basketball and volleyball as well, but my favorite sport is soccer. You can see my blog post here. And Jamil is commenting on someone else's blog there. Right. Jamil is the hub leader right now. Right. Yeah. 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 So I'm that's their job as the hub leader, just to go in and kind of welcome them off the start. So Tanya, it looks to me that if you have like a class of 30 kids, you're going to have 30 different activities going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Wow. And you know what? The great thing about this is they can solve this problem in whatever way they want. So it might just be a simple drawing of their concept of what they want to do. It might be um, maybe just a slideshow presentation. It might be actually physically building something. So it looks different for every kid. Right? Yeah. So, okay. if you walked into my classroom most days, you would think, this is craziness, what is going on? Because right it is craziness, yeah. but I'm okay with the craziness, because I look at the learning that's coming from it, right. and it's it's amazing. So does every kid then have a computer, or do they have... So, so we have we have uh, 12 computers in the classroom. Okay. So not, not, a lot, not enough for everybody. Okay. Students have their own devices, right. or we rotate through. Again, not everybody's using it same time so it's just a when you walk into I it's hard to explain to you because when you walk into my classroom they're not all working on the same thing we start the day off with one of two things a student's leading the activity about what we're doing so if it's a math activity I have a student leader of the day who runs those runs the class um, or what happens is they come in and there's a checklist on the board a famous checklist and that's kind of what they're working on so if the computer's not available then you go to the next thing that you don't need Nice yes. take on that because you said you had three classes. Yes. So really, it's not thirty. It's not ninety things. It's thirty things because you've got three kids in for one right. group that you're checking right. on. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. way less like workload instead of ninety things for you're sure. doing. Yeah. It's thirty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. How much time do you allot a week for this part of your curriculum? Um, so they get once a cycle. Okay. So once a cycle they get. Um, next month we 
We're also going to be starting passion projects, so they also get once the, once the cycle that's combined with it. Mm -hmm. So they've got a STEM passion project period, and they kind of manage what they're going to do during that period of time. Is that part of the hub as well? No, oh, that's separate. separate. That's separate. Yeah. Yes. Do, do they then once their hub has answered your question, do they bring it back to the class and share it at all, or is it is it isolated in that hub? It's pretty isolated. Yeah, it's pretty isolated because there just isn't time to do that. Class class presentations are, are dreadful because they take forever, right? Yeah. So this is that it's isolated sharing, but it's I'm constantly checking in on them and looking at it. I don't look all the time. It's specific groups that I'll look in and check and see how they're doing their progress. And at the end, I'll definitely be looking at their what they're doing. Yeah. Yes. So um, the whole like permission and approval from parents and the whole internet, well, what did you have to do for that? So we just had the um, board, like I just created a board permission form that just said this is what we're involved in, this is this is what the students were taking in, and it was a go. So parents just signed the form at the beginning of the year. And so you didn't have anybody not willing? Awesome. No. No. Yes? Tanya, this is really cool. Thanks so much for sharing. Yeah. This platform here obviously is out of the Google Drive. Yes. The blog. What is it? Is that WordPress? No, it's also in the Google platform. It so okay. if you go, you go here to your your gap right. here, okay, and you click on here, uh, there's Blogger right there. Okay. So that's what we use for Blogger. Oh. 